In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve optimization problems involving circles. So we want to figure out what is the area of the largest circular sector that can be made with a 20 centimeter piece of string. Here we've got a diagram of our circular sector. Let's say it has a radius r and spans an angle theta, and we want to maximize this area of our circular sector. So why don't we start by writing down an expression for the quantity that we want to maximize. We want to maximize the area of the circular sector. Call it a. So a equals, well, it's a portion of the area of the entire circle. The portion is our angle theta divided by the total number of radians in a circle, which is 2 pi. So theta over 2 pi times the area of the entire circle, which would be pi r squared. And we can simplify this a bunch. The pi's cancel, and we've just got 1 half theta r squared. But in order to optimize this function, we need to get it down to a single variable. And to do that, we need to get another equation relating theta and r so we can solve for one in terms of the other. So what other information are we given? Well, we're given that we only have 20 centimeters of string, and the string forms the perimeter of our sector here. So we can write down that the perimeter has to be equal to 20. Now let's get an expression for our perimeter. And the perimeter consists, first of all, there are two sides of length r, so 2r, and then plus this other curved side, which is a portion of the circumference of the circle. That portion, again, is theta over 2 pi. So that times the circumference, which is 2 pi r. So that's equal to 20. And we see that there's some nice canceling that happens. 2 pi cancels with 2 pi. And we have that 2r plus theta times r is equal to 20. Now we see there's just a single theta in this equation, so why don't we solve for theta? Subtracting off 2r from both sides, we get that theta r is equal to 20 minus 2r, and then divide by r to get that theta is equal to 20 minus 2r over r. And now we can sub that back into our area formula. So area equals 1 half times theta. Theta is 20 minus 2r over r, and then that times r squared. And we can simplify this further. Multiply across the numerator, we get 20r squared minus 2r cubed. Multiply across the denominator, that becomes 2r. And 20 over 2 is 10. r squared over r is r. Then minus 2 over 2 is just 1, and r cubed over r is just r squared. So there is our function of area in terms of the radius r. And finally, we are ready to optimize this function. We can do that by setting the derivative equal to zero. That'll give us the stationary points. So a prime of r is equal to zero. Let's take the derivative. Derivative of 10r is just 10. And then minus, using the power rule, 2r. That's got to be equal to zero. That's simple to solve. Just add 2r to both sides, get 10 equals 2r, and then divide by 2, get 5 equals r. So that is our stationary point. Let's circle it just so we keep track of it, but we're not done yet. Just to be absolutely sure that this is indeed a maximum of the area function, let's try the second derivative test. So take the second derivative, a double prime of r is equal to the derivative of the derivative, which would become negative 2, which is less than 0. So we know that this stationary point lies on a downward parabolic-like portion of the graph, and that means it is indeed a max. So that's good. That means we do indeed have a maximum of our area function, and now it just remains to find the actual area that corresponds to that r equals 5. And we can do that by just evaluating the area function at r equals 5. So that becomes 10 times 5 minus 5 squared, which is 50 minus 25, which is 25. And let's not forget the units. The units of area are units of length squared, and length is in centimeters, so centimeters squared. And that is the area of the largest circular sector that can be made with a 20 centimeter piece of string. Here's the next problem. Among all circular sectors with fixed area 50 centimeters squared, what's the angle theta of the one with the smallest perimeter? 
Well, as we saw previously, the perimeter of this kind of circular sector is given by the sum of these two straight sides, 2r, plus the curved side, which comes out to theta r. And we want to minimize the perimeter p with respect to theta, which means we need to write p as a function of theta. So let's find an equation relating r and theta that we can use to sub in for r in terms of theta. What other information are we given? Well, we're given that the circular sector has a fixed area 50 centimeters squared. So we can write down that area is equal to 50. And the area of this circular sector is a portion of the area of the full circle. So theta over two pi times the area of the full circle, which is pi r squared. So that's equal to 50. Let's simplify a little bit. So the pi's cancel and we just have one half theta times r squared is equal to 50. And we can solve for r in terms of theta. Solve for r, you can multiply both sides by two and divide by theta to get r squared is equal to 100 over theta. And then take the square root to get r equals square root of 100 over square root of theta, which becomes 10 over square root of theta. So we go ahead and plug that back into our perimeter function. So 2r, so 2 times 10 over square root of theta, and then plus theta times r, which is, again, 10 over square root of theta. And we can simplify. So perimeter is equal to 20 over square root of theta plus 10, and then theta over square root of theta is just square root of theta. Now to optimize this function, we want to find the stationary points. So we want to find where the derivative p prime of theta is equal to zero. And p prime of theta, why don't we rewrite our function in a form where it's really easy to apply at the power rule. So 20 over square root theta, that's just 20 times theta to the power of negative one half, and then plus 10 square root theta, which means 10 times theta to the power of one half. So we want to take the derivative of this and set it equal to zero. So applying the power rule, bring down that exponent of negative a half, multiply by 20, you get negative 10, and then decrease that exponent by one, so theta to the negative three halves. And then same idea here, bring down the exponent, 10 times a half is five, and then decrease that exponent by one, so five theta to the power of negative one half. That's equal to zero. Now we know that theta is not equal to zero because this sector has to have some amount of area. So we are fine multiplying our equation by theta. Why don't we multiply both sides by theta to the power of three halves, and then we'll cancel out these negative powers. So theta to three halves times negative 10 theta to the negative three halves plus five theta to the negative one half is equal to theta to the three halves times zero. So that gives us just negative 10 here because the powers cancel out. And then we have plus five times theta to the three halves minus one half, which is two halves, which is just one, which makes just theta. So negative 10 plus five theta is equal to zero. Ah, so that's simplified a lot and it's really easy to solve for theta now. Just add 10 to get five theta equals 10 and then divide by five to get theta equals two. So that's our stationary point. And just to be absolutely sure that this is indeed a minimum of the perimeter function, you should probably check that the second derivative is positive. I'll leave that to you, but I assure you that it will work out. And then at that point, we're done. That's what we wanted to find, the angle theta of the sector with the smallest perimeter. So that's our final answer. Theta equals two radians. So now we know how to solve optimization problems involving circles. And in the future, we'll continue to get plenty of practice with optimization problems with other shapes, such as boxes, trays, and cylinders.